It has been 51 years since Russia embarked on creating its first and only wide-body aircraft to date, the iconic Ilyushin EL-86. This aircraft became a legend and an indelible symbol of the nation's aviation history. However, despite being designed to rival Titans like the Boeing 747, McDonnell Douglas DC-10, and even the Airbus A300, the IL-86 couldn't sustain its competitive era as its Western counterparts did. What went wrong with this weird aircraft? Could Russia soon reignite its ambitions to build another wide-body jet? Let's dive into the story. The IL-86, one of the first large civilian jet aircraft of the Soviet Union, was developed in the 1970s to meet the demand for long-haul passenger transport with high capacity. In collaboration with Joe Sutter, the chief engineer responsible for the Boeing 747 project, the Russian company Ilyushin successfully developed the IL-86, making it one of the Soviet Union's notable efforts to create an aircraft capable of competing with Western planes such as the Boeing 747 and Airbus A300, even McDonnell Douglas DC-10. However, despite its advanced features at the time, this Russian aircraft was un unable to achieve significant commercial success, particularly when compared to Western aircraft. The development of the IL-86 began in 1973, when the Soviet Union recognized the need for a large passenger transport aircraft capable of serving both domestic and international flights. Despite technological advancements over previous aircraft, the IL-86 struggled to compete in terms of fuel efficiency and operating costs compared to its Western counterparts. Ilyushin was chosen to develop the IL-86 because they had successfully built the IL-62, the largest aircraft in the world at the time. However, it faced numerous issues. In contrast, its design was highly innovative, with an integrated staircase and a cargo hold placed on the aircraft. This allowed the plane to operate even at small, underdeveloped airports across the Soviet Union. The IL-86 first flew in 1976 and officially entered service in 1980. Aeroflot was the primary airline to operate this aircraft, using it for long-haul flights from the Soviet Union to European and Middle Eastern countries. Despite carrying the ambition of developing the independence and production of wide-body aircraft of a large country, these planes ultimately did not achieve the expected success. So what is the real reason behind this failure? But first and foremost, the Ilyushin IL-86 was more than just an aircraft. It was a clear reflection of the contrasting approaches to aviation between the Soviet Union and the West. So, let's see how it is good before coming to the reason. First, rather than prioritizing cutting-edge technology or operational efficiency, the Russian aircraft was crafted to fit the limited infrastructure of the Soviet Union. This resulted in several unique features, but also restricted its ability to compete internationally. For instance, the integrated staircase and onboard luggage compartment allowed passengers to carry their own luggage without the need for airport conveyor systems. However, this added weight to the aircraft, impacting its performance and fuel efficiency. Compared to its Western wide-body counterparts of the same era, this wide-body aircraft was slower, consumed more fuel, and had a lower passenger capacity. The Ilyushin IL-86, despite its limitations, boasted several remarkable features for its time. Indeed, the aircraft was equipped with a cockpit designed for two pilots and one flight engineer, a layout similar to the DC-10, ensuring both familiarity and efficiency in operation. This aircraft stood out for its impressive capacity, offered in two main variants. The first, the IL-86, was the base model, designed to accommodate up to 350 passengers in a three-class configuration. The second, the IL-86W, extended this capacity to a remarkable 450 passengers, catering to routes with higher demand for passenger transport. While these variants differed primarily in passenger capacity, their core technical features and overall design remained consistent highlighting the robustness and versatility of this aircraft in meeting varying operational needs. If it was so excellent, why did it fail? The reason is being revealed, but what do you think about how it will be if compared with the competitors from Western? The IL-86, while impressive in its own right, faced challenges when compared to its Western counterparts, such as the McDonnell Douglas DC-10 and Boeing 747. With a maximum takeoff weight, MTAU for short, of 206 tons, the Russian aircraft was slightly lighter than the DC-10, which had an MTO of around 272 tons, and the Boeing 747, which topped out at 987 tons. In terms of speed, 
Its cruising speed of 900 km per hour was slower than both the DC-10 with 920 km per hour and the Boeing 747 with 920 km per hour for the 747-100 variant. The Ilyushin aircraft's maximum speed of 950 km per hour also lagged behind the Boeing 747's 1000 km per hour, though it was competitive with the DC-10's top speed of 950. When it came to range, it had a maximum reach of 2,480 nautical miles, but it fell behind the DC-10, which had a range of 3,500 nautical miles, and the Boeing 747, which could cover from 5,300 to 8,000 nautical miles on a single journey. The Ilyushin aircraft's range dropped to 3,500 kilometers with full load, which made it more suitable for regional flights compared to the longer haul capabilities of its rivals. Moreover, as for capacity, as mentioned, the IL-86 had two versions. The standard IL-86 could carry up to 350 passengers, while the IL-86W could accommodate 450. The DC-10, depending on the variant, could seat between 250 to 380 passengers, and the Boeing 747, known for its wide-body design, could carry up to 524 passengers in a high-density configuration. The most important point, also its significant weakness. The IL-86's four Kuznetsov NK-86 engines, each producing 127 kilonewtons of thrust, were less efficient compared to the more advanced turbofan engines of the DC-10 and 747. While the DC-10 used the more efficient CF-6 engines with greater fuel economy, and the 747 employed the powerful Pratt and Whitney JT-9D engines, the Ilyushin aircraft's power plants, developed from military technology, were less suited for the fuel efficiency demands of long-haul travel, limiting its global competitiveness. In summary, while the IL-86 offered solid performance in the context of Soviet-era aviation, its operational range, speed, and fuel efficiency were overshadowed by the more advanced designs of the DC-10 and Boeing 747, both of which were better equipped to meet the demands of international air travel. The IL-86 is more than just an aircraft. It stands as a powerful testament to the challenges faced by the Soviet aviation industry in the face of global competition. Despite its innovative design and reliable operational capabilities, it was hindered by significant limitations in fuel efficiency, engine noise, and maintenance costs. This aircraft could not maintain its competitive position in the international market especially its inability to compete with Western giants like the Boeing 747 and McDonnell Douglas DC-10. Eventually, the aircraft only could become a symbol of the ambitious but technologically limited efforts of the Soviet aviation industry. The collapse of the Soviet Union marked the end of an era in Soviet aviation history as airlines gradually phased out this Russian aircraft in favor of more fuel-efficient, internationally compatible aircraft. By the late 2000s, most IS L 86S had been retired from commercial service and repurposed for other roles such as military transport. Today, the number of these aircraft still flying is rapidly dwindling. Nevertheless, the aircraft remains an invaluable piece of history. It symbolizes an era of ambition, ingenuity, and perseverance within the Soviet aviation sector. Although it failed to achieve the commercial success of its Western counterparts, it stands as a vivid reminder of the relentless efforts by Soviet engineers and inventors to create a wide-body aircraft under the harsh constraints of technology and economics. The IL-86, despite its limitations, left an indelible mark on the history of aviation. While it struggled to compete with Western aircraft on many fronts, its design features, such as its adaptability to limited infrastructure and its creativity under difficult conditions, became a source of inspiration for subsequent generations of aircraft. The story of this aircraft also serves as a poignant reminder of the crucial balance between technological innovation and operational efficiency. In a rapidly evolving global aviation industry, aircraft must not only meet domestic needs, but also adhere to international standards for fuel efficiency, operational costs, and passenger comfort, areas where the IL-86 fell short during its era. The end of this Russian aircraft marked a pivotal transition in Russian aviation as airlines gradually shifted to more modern designs from the West. Yet, it retains a special place in the hearts of those who worked with it, not merely as a mode of transportation, but as a symbol of self-reliance and ingenuity within the Soviet aviation industry. Although it did not achieve significant commercial success, 
the IL-86 played a pivotal role in connecting the vast territories of the Soviet Union and serving millions of passengers. The challenges posed by this aircraft helped shape the development strategies of future Russian aircraft, emphasizing the need for designs that could compete globally and the importance of investing in advanced technologies. Moreover, while no longer seen in the skies, the aircraft remains an, an integral part of global aviation history and memory. It stands as a testament to human creativity and resilience, thriving even under the most difficult conditions. In 2017, Russia and China established a joint venture to develop the wide-body aircraft CR-929, aimed at challenging the dominance of Boeing and Airbus. Since its inception, the CR-929 program has faced significant delays and disagreements between the two partners, culminating in Russia's withdrawal from the program in August 20, 23. The wide-body aircraft will now be developed exclusively by COMAC, but Russia's United Aircraft Corporation will remain a supplier. Therefore, currently, Russia does not have immediate plans to develop wide-body aircraft like the IL-86. However, Russia has been working on other civil aviation projects, particularly through the United Aircraft Corporation. One notable project is the MC-21, which is seen as Russia's new narrow-body aircraft, competing with models like the Boeing 737 and Airbus A320. At the same time, some reports indicate that Russia may plan to develop a new wide-body aircraft in the future, but these projects are facing challenges related to technology and financial resources. The development of future wide-body aircraft in Russia may depend on international cooperation or new technological initiatives, especially as the aviation industry shifts toward more fuel-efficient and environmentally friendly aircraft. Although there are still many obstacles, let's wait and see what Russia will do in the future. Are you impressed by the IL-86? Do you think Russia should continue with a new program for another wide-body aircraft? Leave your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you and stay safe.